The conventional view of Ulysses S. Grant goes something like this. He was a mediocre West Point graduate who fought bravely in the Mexican War, but was forced to resign from the Army because of his drinking. He was a failure at everything he tried in private life, but once the Civil War began, he soared through the ranks of the Union Army, largely because of his willingness to sacrifice his men's lives in order to win battles and achieve ultimate victory, something he finally accomplished when the legendary Confederate General Robert E. Lee surrendered to him at Appomattox. According to this traditional portrayal, Grant parlayed his military fame and success into a two-term presidency, a presidency which ultimately became one of the most scandal-ridden and corrupt in American history. But how much of this conventional story is true? Ron Chernow, the Pulitzer Prize-winning author of Washington and Hamilton biographies, answers that question in Grant, his sweeping and dramatic new portrait of the country's enigmatic 18th president. Ron Chernow joins us now. Ron, welcome to the program. It's a pleasure to be with you, Raphael. Thank you so much. You know, the brief profile I presented in the introduction is basically how Grant was taught to me in school and what I picked up in books and movies. It's changed a little bit over the last few years, but that was the portrait. Uh, how much of that is true? How much is false? How much is caricature? Well, I thought you rather brilliantly, you know, summarized the life for kind of the caricature of, of Grant in your uh, opening, because in the book, I really try to re uh, retire three chief myths. You know, number one, that he was a crude and brutal uh, general. Uh, two, that he somehow stumbled through the Civil War in an alcoholic haze. And three, that he ever saw uh, a failed presidency that was marred by corruption and cronyism. And I discovered that uh, all three of those stereotypes we're completely wrong. But you know, his closest associates, or many of his closest associates, who've been with him for years, they themselves didn't understand. This guy, this seemingly so typical, normal guy, could be so unbelievably successful at war. You discovered the secret? Well, you know, it's interesting, um, because quite unlike the other people that I've uh, written about, whom I felt were built for success, you know, Grant, up until the time of the Civil War, has, you know, suffered one business uh, failure after another. In the 1850s, he's reduced to selling firewood on street corners in St. Louis. I, I, it was pathetic. Yeah, I had pathetic, no idea yeah. he had sunk so low. Yeah, he actually has to pawn his watch one Christmas to buy gifts for his family. And finally, he's reduced, and he's in his late 30s at this point, right on the eve of the Civil War. He's reduced to going to his father, who owned a leather goods store in Galena, Illinois, and begging for a job as a clerk. He takes a job as a clerk, junior to his two younger brothers. You can imagine what a humiliation oh that God. was. And then this man who had failed at one thing after another, the Civil War breaks out. Uh, two months later, he's uh, a colonel. Four months later, he's a brigadier general. Ten months later, he's a major general. And then this you know, failed leather goods store clerk, by the end of the war, is general in chief and has a million soldiers under his command. It's unbelievable. It's, it's, do, do you know any other figure in American history, or history anywhere, no. th that has such a contrasting life? No, not, you know, not such lows. Uh, you know, Raphael, there's a quality to this book that's unlike anything that I've written before, and it's a pathos. It's a story of a fundamentally decent, hardworking man who is repeatedly defeated by circumstances. And it turned out that he required a kind of narrow set of uh, conditions for all of these wonderful hidden traits to... Uh, well, what were some uh, of those traits? Well, you know, an amazing um, uh, perseverance and a daring. I think because he'd had so much failure um, before the Civil War, when the war breaks out, he has nothing to lose and everything to uh -huh. gain, and he takes these colossal yeah. risks that all of these well bored yeah. generals, you know, would yeah. uh, not. Let's talk about the comparison of Grant and Lee. Again, the conventional mm -hmm. view is that Grant just threw all the forces he could into a fight while Lee was, was a strategic genius. Yeah. Uh, you have a different take. Well, this is very, very interesting, you know, this stereotype, because Ulysses S. Grant captures three Confederate armies during the war. Fort Donaldson in Tennessee in 1862, Vicksburg, Mississippi, 1863. Brilliant campaign. And then most famously, Robert E. Lee's army at Appomattox Courthouse in 1865. Robert E. Lee never captured a single <laughs> Union army. So why should Lee be considered the greater general? So all you know, these people who say, well, it was simply the population of the North was larger, it was the manufacturing power of the North. Before um, Grant faces off against Lee in Virginia in 1864, there have been six generals yeah. who tried to defeat Lee, all of whom failed with the same <laughs> advantages of uh, manpower and uh, material that yeah. Grant had. So Grant was a dazzling strategist. Yeah. You know, and, and talking about that, Grant believed with Lincoln 
that the proper path to end the war or after the war was to be magnanimous with the Confederacy right. and including the, the top lead military leaders, which is why he was so yeah. generous to Lee at, uh, at Appomattox. But as history proved, that was incompatible yeah. with creating a South, with fundamentally transforming the South into a, a place that was truly free, to, truly equal, and truly safe for, for black people. No, the, I mean, you put your finger on you know, what's the central paradox of Grant's life, because his terms are so magnanimous, he's so generous at Appomattox Courthouse, that Grant at that point becomes the great symbol of North-South reconciliation. He refuses to allow his men to celebrate. He refuses to uh, enter uh, Richmond, which was the capital of the Confederacy, after it fell. His wife, Julia, wanted him to go, and he said, Julia, don't you understand um, how bitter defeat is for these uh, people. Uh, talk about his presidency, the failures and the triumphs of his presidency. Well, first, the failures. I mean, there were scandals. You know, that's, this is not something invented by his enemies. There were a lot mm -hmm. of scandals. The scandals did not involve him uh, personally. He did not condone them. He prosecuted them uh, vigorously. I was talking before about how naive Grant could be. He was very blind to the machinations of people in his immediate vicinity. But what I try to show in the book is that those scandals, though real and worth talking about, uh, were the minor story of his administration. His effort to crush the Ku Klux Klan, I mean, the Grand's Justice Department brings 3,000 indictments against the Klan. Um, his efforts to protect the African-American community, the fact that he became the most important president for the African-American community between Abraham Lincoln and Lyndon Johnson, this seems to be kind of, a, for us as a country, much bigger yeah. and more important story. Right. You know, we're, we're almost out of time, but I gotta ask you, how would you rank Grant as a military leader, how would you rank him among the presidents of the United States? Well, Grant, I think, may have been the you know, greatest military leader in uh, American history, you know, and I've heard uh, generals say this, his campaigns are still uh, studied closely at West Point. Um, as president, I wouldn't put him up there with Washington, you know, Lincoln, uh, FDR, I wouldn't go that far. But I think that he was a major president, and this was someone who, 50 years ago was considered one of the worst presidents we ever had. So I would say that Grant was a very, very good president, although not maybe yeah. a great president. And a good man. And a great man. Yeah. All right, Ron. It's a, it's a really wonderful book. Uh, there's so much in here. I, we, we just began to touch the surface. Grant by Ron Chernoff. Ron, thank you so much for joining us. Today. My pleasure, Thank you.